Today, I'm pleased to introduce our latest product, which we call NX PowerPack. Now, many don't know, but we started NX as a 20% project, fully open source, on the side while we were mostly a consultancy. And we used it to help our clients ship software with a higher quality and faster. But we kept evolving it only in our 20% time. Now, over the years, we transformed from a consultancy into a fully product-oriented company. And so we had an opportunity to work full-time on NX while also developing our SaaS offering, which is NX Cloud. Now, with every new feature that came up, we basically had to decide whether we want to put it into the open source project or NX Cloud. And even though our CEO, Jeff, would give away as much as possible for free, we had to keep a balance there, especially with the long-term sustainability of the open source work that we pushed into NX, the CLI. Now, before you draw wrong conclusions, we're not going to change NX as it is today. So we're not going to restrict existing feature sets. We're not going to change the license. Rather, we're introducing a collection of paid extensions, which is what is NX PowerPack. And that leaves us with an X the MIT licensed fully open source project, NX Power Pack with a commercial license, and our SaaS offering, which is NX Cloud. Now, the goal with Power Pack is to specifically deliver enterprise features. Many customers have asked us about this, but they were struggling with longer procurement processes and still wanted to have quick access to enterprise features while they were working towards NX Cloud. And so with NX Power Pack, we allow an easy to acquire license that you can immediately add into your existing NX workspace and start benefiting from some of these enterprise features. Now in this first release of NX Power Pack, we have code owners for monorepos. We have a plugin to self-host custom cache locations for remote caching on CI. And we have an experimental plugin that allows you to have workspace conformance rules. Ready? Let's dive straight in. Now, in order to benefit from any of these PowerPack features, you need to go first acquire a license. And the easiest way is to go to nx.dev slash PowerPack and hit that get PowerPack button. Once you have a license, you can run the activate PowerPack command, which will then activate your license in your current workspace. Now, if this is an open source project, be aware to not include the license file that gets generated here into the public source code, as it could obviously be replicated by others that clone the repo. So once the license is in place, we can start exploring some of these PowerPack features. So let's start with code owners. To install it, run nx add add nx PowerPack owners. And this will install a package into your workspace and also do some slight pre-configuring. So if you go to the nx JSON, you can now see at the very bottom, we have a new section that is a sync generator, which we're going to talk about in a minute. And then we have a new owners section in here. Now, most of the current VCS providers like GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab have a code owners functionality. And this basically is a way to define who reviews which changes in the repository. Now, this is in particular important in a monorepo setup where you have different projects in the same repository. And so here, for instance, you might have different domain areas where you want to have the orders team review changes into their section, into their domain area section, while a product team or the UI design team should review theirs, even though another person from the team, from the company makes changes. Now, all these specifications are usually in the code owner's files, but they are folder-based. However, in a monorepo, very often you reason in a project-based strategy. So for instance, you run projects here in a monorepo by running nx run many, dash t build, dash p, and you give it a set of projects to run the build against. Now, what we have done here is to allow you to define code owners in a different way. So first of all, we can still leverage file-based patterns. So we can go ahead, for instance, say we have a CI configuration, which lives inside here, which should be reviewed by the DevOps group and which has here a glob pattern defined at the file level. Now, having defined this, once you run this sync generator, it will automatically generate a code owners file that reflects these definitions. Now, why we could do the same also for our products and orders team here, we don't necessarily want to define folder structures or paths as this is kind of brittle as we might move projects around in the monorepo structure. So we therefore introduced different ways of how you can target such projects. You can define a project array here, which uses a glob pattern that you can also use in a run many command that NX provides, saying that all the projects that have this naming convention in their project name will be targeted to be reviewed by the team orders. Alternatively, what is even more flexible, you can also leverage the tagging system that NX provides. 
So each of these products has the possibility to have a tag associated to it. So in this case, for instance, I associate the string scope orders, meaning that this product here is of scope orders because it lives in this domain area. This allows us to rewrite our code owners files in a quite powerful way. So as you can see here, we still leverage the file-based glob pattern for the CI config since it's just one single file, but we now leverage the tagging mechanism to target these projects for all of the other ones that we have in the workspace. So here saying the scope orders tag should be reviewed by the orders team, similarly for products and also design system. And now as we keep regenerating our code owners files, we can see how this is being reflected in the code owners files itself by translating it into a GitHub compatible, in this case, folder structure setup. So you can see here, these different folders, even though we didn't specify them, have been automatically guarded and synchronized here into the code owners files by the sync command. Now, in order to make sure that the code owners definition and our definition in NXJSON are always in sync, it is highly recommended that we go into our CI configuration here and set up a corresponding check in here. And this can be done by simply running here NX sync colon check, which will make sure these two properties are in sync and otherwise fail your PR and such that you immediately notice it and can go back and fix it. Another feature that comes with NX PowerPack is the ability to self-host your remote caching. And right now we support AWS storage or network file-based storage that you can define on your CI system. So to install S3 caching, you just run NX add at NX PowerPack S3 cache, which will then query you a couple of questions about the location of your S3 bucket. And finally, it will update your NX JSON with the according information that you provided. Now, remote caching makes mostly sense on CI. To configure S3 caching on your specific CI system, definitely consult AWS documentation. Here's one way to set it up for GitHub Actions in your CI configuration. And once we push this to CI, we can see it run through configure AWS caching and then run our commands. And so once this run succeeds, you can see it roughly took three minutes. Now, if we go back into our application and make a small change in this admin app to invalidate its cache and push this again to our CI. And now this time around with the remote caching in place, you can see the build only took one minute, roughly taking only 19 seconds to run all of our commands compared to the three minutes that we had before. As an alternative to the S3 caching, you can also use the file system and network drive based caching by installing the PowerPack shared FS cache package and then configuring in the NXJSON the cache directory and have that point to a folder which you then cache on your CI system. And finally, the workspace conformance package. Now, to install the conformance package into your NX workspace, you can run NX at, at NX PowerPack conformance, and that is going to initialize your NX JSON with a set of rules that you can run on your workspace. So, if you open up the NX JSON, I have already set up some rules in this specific project here, where you can see we have module boundary rules, which were already present as linting rules in NX, but with the difference that these here can be enforced across different projects and not just for linting specific tasks. So in this specific setup, I have, for instance, a Remix application as well as some Rust binaries that I'm compiling in this workspace. And we can define these rules and enforce these rules across the technology stacks that we're using. Now, the PowerPack conformance package already comes with a built-in set of rules that can be applied to your workspace. And you can also define your own, as you can see in this case here. And so these rules can simply be defined as TypeScript files in your workspace, where you can define a name, the category of the rule, how it is being enforced, the severity, and the actual implementation down here. Now to run the conformance rules, run NX conformance, and this will check your workspace against the rules that you have defined. In this case, we have no violations. But if, for instance, we introduce a violation based, for instance, on this ensure code owners, we can go up here and remove one of these definitions here, such that it doesn't have any ownership defined, which is, however, enforced by this specific rule here. We can run, again, PMPM NX conformance, and we'll now highlight that the Remix app doesn't have any owners defined. Now, clearly, you also want to enforce this on CI, and so you can go into your CI config, and you can define a conformance check that you run here, such that your PR fails if it is not conformant to the rules you have defined. Now, this is a very early version of conformance, allowing you to run these rules locally on your existing model repo. In future iterations, we are going to allow you to connect your PowerPack conformance rules 
to your existing NX Cloud organization. And this not only will allow you to deploy these rules to your NX Cloud organization, but also to run them across connected workspaces and therefore enforce them on a multi mon repo scenario or even a poly repo scenario, regardless of the tech stack that you're using. So this is a very high level overview of the first set of features that come with this release of PowerPack. There are more coming in the future. Now, if you wanna get started, nxodev slash PowerPack is where you can get a license, but you will also find the links to our docs, which live on nxodev slash docs, which now have a dedicated section about PowerPack, how to install everything, how to set it up, configure it into your workspace. So that should get you started. Have fun and I'll see you in the next one.